Hello, this is Dan Ritchie again with Howler 8, and I'd like to be demonstrating some of the basic fundamental concepts within the program, and I'm going to start with custom brushes. Now, a lot of people have asked us about brushes in the program um, uh, regarding the size of brushes and that, that sort of thing. Um, now, there are three types of brushes within the program. One is internal brushes, and that's basically what you get when you uh, go to this, the shapes tool here and it gives you a number of preset shapes that you can work with there are a lot of different brush sets you can work with and you get all these sorts of uh, nice shapes and this is a good starting point for a brush it's not uh, everything there is to brushes inside the program but it's a good starting place and that is basically internal brushes and there are a number of things you can do with internal brushes you can change all the different settings uh, color bleed dry out that sort of thing it, uh, you can also use now in version 8 you can also use the uh, internal brush with all these uh, effects such as watercolor gel and that sort of thing and get all these unique effects uh, such as these um, you can add a drop shadow for example and that's uh, basically our internal brushes uh, now say you wanted a larger brush or say you wanted to pick up part of an image to, to use as a new brush shape that's not a problem in fact, when you select uh, any number of our tools, which are already uh, designed, already built for you, uh, these are not canned effects. These are actually created within the program using the built-in tools. Uh, every last one of them is uh, made inside the program. Um, it's just a matter of uh, changing settings and picking up different brush types and that sort of thing. So when I talk about a custom brush, I'm talking about an image that you pick up uh, this could be any image, but basically I'll make a shape here and, and we'll uh, we'll use this shape as a new custom brush. Say I wanted to find a new uh, new natural painting tool. That's not a problem. I'll just hit the B on the keyboard or this tool over here called the brush custom brush selector tool, and I'll go over here and I'll select that, and that becomes a new brush shape. I'll change the opacity so we can see it better. As you can see, there's a full full color uh, preview of uh, the brush. A lot of people have asked us if we, we had a uh, marching ants uh, to show what our brush shape looks like but actually there is a full color preview which is gives you an exact uh, idea of what your brush looks like. It's just a matter of hitting this preview button here, the PRV button right up there on the uh, top of the screen. and That does give you a full color preview of the brush before you start painting with it. Now that we have a brush picked up, uh, there's a lot we can do with it there are two different modes matte mode and color mode color mode is what we see here it picks up the uh, the exact number the exact colors that we uh, picked up from the screen that becomes our new brush say we had a photograph or something that would look just like uh, the photograph that we picked up and we can paint with that uh, let me turn that off and we can paint with it just like that we can stamp it down that sort of thing that's one way of um, moving images around copying and pasting and that sort of thing. Instead of using a copy and paste uh, metaphor, we're actually uh, using a brush metaphor. Everything in the program is is brush centric. So that's one way of working with these uh, these brushes and uh, sh shapes and moving them around. There is also a mode called matte mode, which I'll select. You can hit F2 on the keyboard or there is a uh, menu item for it under style. Uh, to show you uh, F1 is color mode and F2 is matte mode. I'll go ahead and select that matte mode. Now the primary color that we use as a painting color has become the new color of our brush. And as I select a new color it becomes our new brush color. And now that becomes a painting tool that we can work with. Um, now we can change any number of settings we wanted to on here. Color bleed, dry out, Uh, angle, random angle, steps, all these sort of things. Let me just put the steps down some. Uh, that's a little bit too much. Uh, we can give it a random size or uh, we can use a tablet. Um, actually in version 8, uh, tablet angle or rather uh, the, uh, the tilt of the tablet is in, in full use there. As you can see as I draw you can see as I draw and, and apply tilt with that tablet, you can see it move back and forth. And that's a very useful new feature. Um, there are a lot of other other 
effects we can add to this random position scale uh, random colors any number of things we can do to make a new uh, natural media out of this and this is basically how all of the media within the program is started by either start using one of those internal brushes or by defining a new brush shape and this is kind of made a oh I don't know some sort of weird paint blob with a real real high uh, amount of smeariness and that sort of thing uh, there's quite a lot more we can do to, the, do to this adding effects later such as the uh, gouache mode which gives sort of a wet edge effect um, changing the amount of pigment changing the uh, the papers will have a dramatic effect on this as well changing that relief and dry brush effect let's see as you can see as that dries out it starts to give you a dry brush effect like in the old days when uh, you work on a model kit and you'd use that dry brush technique to make sort of a make your brush stroke brush, uh, brush stroke sort of fade out and that's one thing that's very useful uh, for, for creating that natural media f effect or just getting unique effects out of this we have a, a number of new uh, paper textures within the program now by the way uh, which come in quite handy And uh, speaking of custom brushes, uh, we're not limited to just picking up small brushes. We can create very, very large brushes if we wanted to. Uh, we could pick up this whole canvas as a brush if we wanted to do that. I'll make a, a much larger brush here out of this shape here. I'll, I'll go back to that uh, matte mode. Now that's a new brush. As you can see, we're starting to get some uh, fairly unique and interesting uh, properties here. I'll go to uh, watercolor mode instead of that gouache, and we'll start getting more blending as well. And we're getting a kind of a weird wet uh, wash looking, uh, maybe a sponge look or something. I'm not really sure what we're getting at this point, but there's a, a lot more parameters we could change there. That is, that is more or less custom brushes and what you can do with them. There's quite a lot more. There's uh, You can change the, the underlying size of the bitmap. Um, now, we, had, we do have the ability to scale as we paint or, or basically change the size of that brush in general using uh, the size parameter here. We can make that a much smaller paintbrush. Um, now, if we use this rel step property, uh, um, that will make the uh, the step value relative to the size of the brush, which will help create uh, brushes that can be scaled more more conveniently. Say the step is 16, that will become 16% then of the of the size of the brush instead of an absolute value of 16 pixels uh, every time that's stamped down. Um, 16 might still be a little bit much, but since we have this random uh, position and everything on here all right so this is one way to create a brush that scales well so you can have a size 9 or you can have, have, a, have a brush that's also a size 100 uh, or somewhere in between you're not limited to that the size of that internal brush of say 35 pixels you can create a 100 by 100 or a 1,000 by a 1,000 brush if you wanted to, or you could uh, create a, a really long brush like a 1,000 by 3 pixels or something crazy like that. Um, there's still quite a lot more you can do with brushes. You can make them seamless. Say you picked up a texture uh, you wanted to make seamless, you can go to uh, one of the tools here, brush, um, make seamless, and that will just basically blend the edges together so it becomes a seamless brush. Um, there is also the ability to make an animated brush. Uh, you start by creating a new a uh, animated brush with the menu item create, specify the number of frames you want in it, and then once you've done that, you have the ability to go to a timeline. Animated brush timeline. And it'll show you the uh, the number of frames in your brush, and you can do uh, a number, apply a number of uh, effects to this. Say, 
changing the color or the hue or something or the size or uh, dithering it or oh any number of things but I'll make a brush where the where the color cycles from uh, well from the color the the default color the the original color by setting a keyframe I'll go to the end and I'll have it cycle let's see hue well I'll go from there there in fact so it goes all the way from one to the other now let me hit render as you can see it's cycling through those colors now we have a animated brush where the color cycles uh, between uh, blue and orange and all these different colors all I have to do then is hit keep render and that becomes our new brush now as we paint Let me go back to, um, excuse me, let me go back to style color. Now as we paint, you can see we're getting that animated uh, brush uh, where the color is cycling. We could have also changed the size, we could have rotated it, uh, any number of things. We could create a, a very complex brush, such as some of these um, unique brushes we call them, uh, such as this one that looks sort of like a squash or some some crazy sort of thing. Let me let me find that one if it's here. Here it is organic. And it just uh, it was just a basic shape, but we changed the scale and it became this weird uh, uh, I'm not even sure what to call that, but this weird shape that was this animated. Um, and you can also uh, take image stacks or uh, arrays from other programs that use a uh, say three by three uh, a grid of uh, images that then combines it into what they might call a hose or a uh, um, one of the, one of the other type of brush t brush uh, stacks uh, that are out there you can actually convert into an animated brush and uh, back in fact uh, using some of the built-in tools and that is basically a look at custom brushes within Howler uh, there's a lot more to be covered um, adding drop shadows um, brushes can be used as patterns uh, you can you can add you can load a uh, image sequence say you had rendered an image sequence uh, like we did recently using blender um, to create a, a, a tumbling asteroid with an alpha channel you can load it in as an image sequence as a brush um, and the alpha channel would become the transparency 